Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Around two years ago, I created a video showcasing how you can create a portable bootable external Linux SSD that you can plug and play into any system that you want. I used my original Windows machine with VirtualBox installed on it and an external SSD to create this entire video. If you want to have a look at it, you can simply click the link on the top right and access it. Since then, a lot of you have asked me how I can do it without using the virtual box directly on the SSD. So in this video, we will learn how you can do it without the use of virtual box. In order to do this, we would need three things. One, your original machine. In my case, it will be a Windows machine. An external SSD where the operating system would be installed and we will use an external USB drive which we will use as the installation medium. We will create this installation medium by downloading the Ubuntu 24 ISO file and flash it on the USB using Palena Etcher. Of course, this is just what I am using. You don't need to use Palena Etcher. You can use any other tool that you want. Similarly, you don't need to use Ubuntu 24.04. You can use any Linux operating system that you want and create your own portable bootable SSD. It should be fairly similar. So without further wait, let's quickly dive into it. So first of all, we'll download our Linux image. In this case, I'm downloading Ubuntu, but you can download any Linux ISO file that you want. say preference and I want to download Ubuntu desktop and the latest one is 24.04 so I'm going to install that just save it on the desktop and that's pretty much it till the ISO is being downloaded we can do a few things we can prepare our hard drive and we can also prepare our USB stick that we'll use for installation let's start with the first one and let me add my SSD on which I will install Ubuntu so I just attached my SSD and again I'm showing this here for Ubuntu it could be for any Linux operating system that you want to install based on the requirements of your Linux flavor or your Linux distro you may need to choose an SSD with appropriate capacity in my case I have a 1 TB SSD so it's quite enough for any Linux operating system that I want to install so now since I have my SSD added let me quickly go to disk management and as you can see here i have c drive which is my main drive you can see it as disk zero here and then we have disk one which has a bunch of these partitions so i don't want all of it so i will delete everything and create a new ssd partition let me quickly do this by deleting this and you see this one I cannot delete. This is unallocated. This is unallocated. And if you face a similar issue, just follow the steps that I'm following. But please make sure that you choose the disk, in this case, disk one, that is not your system disk. Meaning here, disk zero is my system disk, which has C drive on which my Windows operating system is running. And I will install Linux on this external SSD called disk one. In order to gain the maximum amount of space, I'm simply deleting everything and then I will format it so that it's ready for the installation of the fresh Linux distro, in our case Ubuntu. So now since I find a partition that I cannot delete, I will go to disk part. Either you can run it from here or you could run it directly by pressing Windows R and then typing disk part. Anything is fine. Let me simply close this one. And now just follow the commands that I am typing. So let's list all our disks that we have on our system by list disk. I see disk zero and disk one. Disk one is my external SSD. So I will select that for you. It should be the external SSD that you have. So check which disk you have as external SSD and select that. For me, it's disk one. So I'm going to write cell disk one and you can see disk one is now selected and then i would simply list the partitions list partition and we see 47 479 mb of size and this corresponds to what we saw here 480 mb that's actually there and now i can simply select that because there's only one partition so cell partition one so now i have that selected 
and now I can simply delete it by delete partition override and now it's successfully deleted if you go back you can see now we have everything as unallocated now to allocate this from an unallocated space I'll simply go and create new simple volume pretty straightforward I'll use all of it yeah I already have C drive so I'll assign it a D drive I'll format as at NTFS and I can write here Ubuntu 24 and that's it and now I have a very healthy partition and it also opens it so you could see in my PC I have a C drive and a D drive great so we have our SSD external SSD prepared on which we will install our Ubuntu now the next thing that we need is a software called Balena Etcher this is what we will use to create our bootable USB so now I will install Palena Etcher. Let me download it. So these are all the possible downloads. I am on Windows 64. So I will install that. And here I have my setup. And now if you'll see, I have my Ubuntu as well as Palena Etcher downloaded. Before we proceed ahead, let me add my USB stick. So right now you see two drives here. Let me add my USB stick. And now you see a temp USB stick with 118 gigs of free memory. Cool. I'll install Balena Etcher. I'll open it. So it says flash from file. So I'm going to flash it from my Ubuntu ISO. My target would be, of course, my USB stick. And then I'll simply flash it. You might see such pop-ups, but you can simply ignore it because you can see our flashing is already going on. I think this is because Balena Etcher actually formats it before flashing the drive. As you can see, it tells me to format the disk because it just reinserted the drive. I can simply ignore it. And to be honest, I could actually skip the validation also. And we are done here. Now I will close this and start the booting process. All right. And now I will restart my system and try to go on the boot menu. This is my boot menu. Depending on what machine you are using, your boot menu might be different. You need to figure out how you can enable changing the primary boot device. For me, I can simply press F12 to go into the boot menu and select which boot device I would want. Like I mentioned earlier, I have here a range of drives. The one that we will be installing on is the Samsung PSSD and the one which has my operating system Ubuntu installation that we created using Balena Etcher is this generic mass storage. So I will simply use this and press enter. And now it's very simple. I will go ahead and try to install Ubuntu. Now I'm on the screen. And from here, it's pretty simple. I'll choose English. I don't care about this. I'll use English US. For now, I won't connect it to the internet. And I will click on installing Ubuntu with an interactive installation and just with essentials. You can check this box on, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to uncheck it. Click on next. And now comes the most important part, choosing the right directory. We can simply click on next. And now here we need to choose our SSD. So like I mentioned earlier, my PSSD was the SSD that was 1TB that I want to use, which is a Samsung external SSD. And now after selecting this, I can simply click on next, simply add my username, a password, and that's pretty much it. Make sure you choose the right SSD that you want to install the Linux operating system on. Now I simply click on next. You can choose anything. I'm just going to choose anything random and click on install. A few moments later. And now our operating system is installed. I'll simply restart the system. As it mentions, I'll simply remove the USB stick and press enter. Since now my system is restarting and if I don't press anything, you will see that my system goes by default to my Windows operating system. However, if I restart 
And now this time, if I press F12 while the system is restarting, I will go back to my boot menu. And now here, if you remember, we had a generic USB here, which is not there because I removed the USB. And by default, it went to WDC, which is my Windows operating system. And now if I simply go to the Samsung PSSD and press enter, it would start my Ubuntu system. And there you have it, your Ubuntu system on an external SSD that you can plug and play to any machine and simply use it. Now, I created this video specifically for Ubuntu 24.04. However, you can use the same methodology to install any Linux distro on a portable external SSD. Of course, depending on the compatibility of your Linux distro, but in most cases, it should be fine. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. I'll see you in the next one.